guys, it's Micah and today I'll be telling you about the Saturator in Ableton Live. The Saturator is a wave shaping effect that can add grit, punch or warmth to your sound. It can coat input signal with a soft saturation or drive them into many different flavors or distortion. This XY grid helps you to visualize the saturator's shaping curve. The shaper's input and output values are mapped to the X and the Y axis respectively, where X is your input and your Y is your output. This curve defines the transfer function, which is the extent to which output values fluctuate in relation to the input value. So because this is usually a nonlinear process, the incoming signal is reshaped to a greater or a lesser degree depending on its level at each moment in time. Now let's have a look at the controls. The incoming signals are first clipped to the decibel level set by the drive control. The meter on the right shows how much saturator is influencing the signal. Now you've got six modes to operate in. You choose them with this drop down list. The bottom one, the wave shaper mode, also features six adjustable wave shaping parameters, which I'll get to in a moment. In the analog clip and the digital clip modes, the signal is clipped completely and immediately. The soft sign, medium curve, and hard curve modes soften signal clipping to varying degrees. Sinusoid fold mode can be good for special effects. But the most dramatic effects can be created by selecting the wave shaper curve, which has its own dedicated set of controls. Now you may have noticed them pop up. You need to go to this little triangle in your title bar, click on it, and then the saturator audio effect extends. On the bottom right you now have your six dedicated controls for your wave shaper curve. We've got Drive, Lin, Curve, Damp, Depth, and Period. Drive determines how much the input signal will be influenced by the wave shaper parameters. Setting Drive to zero will negate the effect entirely. So if I've got some weird curve going on here, then with no drive it's going to sound the same. As I increase the drive, the other effects take effect. Lin works together with curve and the depth parameters to alter the linear portion of the shaping curve. Now if I change Lin without changing curve and depth, you can just see that the gradient of this line changes. But add to that some curve and some depth. Altering Lin now, you can see it kind of rotates it. Curve adds mostly third order harmonics to the input signal. You can see how the wave gets more dense the higher the curve. Damp flattens any signal near the grid's origin, as you can see here the intersection of your X and Y. It basically behaves like an ultra-fast noise gate. Then depth over here controls the amplitude of a sine wave that is superimposed onto the distortion curve. So here you can kind of see the shape, that superimposed wave. And then period determines the density of ripples in the superimposed sine wave. So the depth wave. If there's nothing in depth, then the period does nothing. So period and depth work together. All right, I'm just going to close up the saturator again. We don't need those controls for the moment. Then underneath your drive control, you've got your DC button. And this activates a DC filter at the saturator's input stage. This is mainly useful for removing DC offsets from audio material that contains them. Activating this color button enables two filters. If it's off, everything here is grayed out, but when it's active, you've got this filter down here. The first of these filters is controlled with a bass control, and this dictates how much the effect will be reduced or increased for very low frequencies. The second filter, frequency, is essentially an equalizer and it's used for controlling higher frequencies. The second filter is shaped with this frequency, which is your cut of frequency, your width and your depth control. Your width is the bandwidth of the second filter. It determines the overall size of the frequency range affected by the second filter. And depth determines how much the second filter will contribute to saturated sound. <laughs> Now we get to our output section. This output control attenuates the level at the device output. 
When the soft clip switch is active, saturator will also apply an instant of its analog clip curve to the output. The dry weight control adjusts the balance between the processed and the dry signals, where dry is as though your saturator is bypassed and 100% wet is your 100% saturation. Now with the saturator, aliasing can be reduced by enabling high quality mode, which can be accessed by right clicking or control clicking this title bar to get your context menu. If high quality is checked and active, then it improves the sound quality, particularly with high frequency signals, but there's a slight increase in CPU usage. And that's your saturator. As I mentioned earlier, saturators are great to add warmth to an audio clip but it can also add a very gritty sound and add high frequency content to a very low bass. These presets are great, but if you really want to have full control, I suggest you familiarize yourself with the Wave Shaper and these six controls. And that's it for the saturator. I'm making a video like this for all the audio effects, so feel free to check them out, and I will see you soon in the next one.